بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده رسول uh, The following set of verses address a totally different uh, topic They talk about the rejection of mankind to the truth uh, their shortcomings with their Lord uh, some details or description of the origin of mankind uh, a very fast description of the life cycle uh, and from from uh, creation until death allah azza wa jal said qutila al insanu ma akfara destroyed or cursed is man how disbelieving is he see those who deny and persist on disbelief and rejection to the message of Allah Azza wa Jal and the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jal despite the fact that the truth was made clear to them uh, as in one of the interpretations of the meaning of this verse are deserving of death Allah Azza wa Jal concluded the verse was saying, "Ma akfara, how disbelieving is he?" Another meaning to "Ma akfara" instead of "How disbelieving is he?" What makes him disbelieve? Why would he disbelieve? And then Allah Azza wa Jal describes why he shouldn't disbelieve. Min ayi shayin khalaqa. من نطفة خلقه فقدره. From what thing or substance did he, سبحانه وتعالى, create him? From a sperm drop, he created him and destined for him. Allah Azza wa Jal said, What is the origin of you, mankind? What is your origin? So that you are arrogant and you reject. Then Allah Azza wa Jal answers by saying, You are created from a sperm drop. You are created from, some, some, from something, stumbling with the tongue here, right? That man feels disgusted if it touches his clothes. This is the origin of mankind, a drop of sperm. Allah is saying, your origin is this, and yet you're arrogant, yet you deny, yet you reject, yet you do not appreciate the bounty of Allah upon you. He created you from that. He formed you. He decreed your lifespan, He provided for you, and that's also decreed and written, and He appointed a time where all of this will be concluded, the moment of your death. Then how can you disbelieve? How can you be disbelieve and deny resurrection, knowing that He formed you from this, and that this is your origin? ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَهُ Then he eased the way for him. After he formed him in his mother's womb, going through different stages, as described in details, in different verses in the Qur'an, in different, different surahs in the Qur'an, Allah gives the, the stages of the formation of mankind from the drop of sperm until he is formed into a fetus. Then after that, he comes out from that protective container, the mother's womb. He goes out, having been weak and in need and dependent on his mother, coming out in the same state of being weak and dependent upon his mother, for whom Allah Azza wa facilitated to feed while he was in and after he's out. 
Allah brought him out to this huge universe and facilitated it for his service and benefit and facilitated the means for guidance see a lot of people have a very limited definition of rizq thinking that provision is only dollar sign real sign pound sign it's only money but it's much broader than this the fact that allah azza wa jal guides you to his path is the best it's the ultimate provision anyone can get your health is risk having a good wife is risk Having good children is risk. Being content with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal is risk. So Allah Azza wa Jal brought us from our, our, our mother's wombs into this open world and facilitated all types of risk for us. Tangible and non-tangible. Food, money, and guidance. And then, as we said, Allah Azza wa set a certain time for this journey to end. So Allah Azza wa brought us out and He has a set time for us which will conclude our story in this life. And this is what the following verse is saying. ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَ so look at the cycle described here from a drop of sperm until you're in the grave. Then he causes his death and provides a grave for him. Allah Azza wa Jal summarized that cycle in these few verses. But though they are summarized, yet they are enough. For one to understand the cycle of life and the wisdom behind it. So when the journey of this life for mankind ends and the set appointed time is reached, he will face what every human being will face. He will face them. And then out of mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal, it's one of the bounties of Allah Azza wa Jal upon us that He legislated that dead people should be buried in graves. It's a way of honoring the human being. Because you know what happens with the bones of, and the flesh of the, pers of the dead person in, in a very short period, in a, in, a, in a period of days very short days we become something that's despicable for us alive people when we see or smell so allah azza wa jal after causing us to die he legislated that we're buried to honor us again again this this message that is conveyed to the people of the quraysh is that allah is the one who had the command before your birth. He commanded and you were created. And it's his command that put an end to your creation, to your life. He said, be kun fayakun, and you're dead. Again, how can you deal with this creator who has or in whose hands is your creation, your life, and your death. How can you deny him, deny his ability to resurrect you and his ability to hold you to account? Then when he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will resurrect him. So he caused him to die. 
He legislated that he's buried in the grave. And then we are alone in that greed, in that dark hole underground. For Allah only knows how many years until the day of resurrection. That dark, gloomy hole. The life in which depends on our performance before we're thrown in it. If we're good, then it will be illuminated and bright. And it will be the beginning of an eternal, blissful life. And if we insist on disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal and transgressing the limits He set for us, then no one to blame but us. That hole will be a miserable hole, an introduction to much more and much severer punishment to come after that. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَهُ Then when he, Allah the Almighty, wills, he will resurrect him. He will bring him back from that hole, resurrect him back, put back life into him. And uh, we've described in Surah Amma and Nazi'at, the terrifying scenes of the Day of Judgment, so there is no need uh, to repeat them. Are we ready, brothers? Though this is addressing, or was addressing in, 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 uh, in principle, was addressing the Quraysh, but it's also a message sent to me and you that there is a time when you will end this journey, be thrown in that small hole, the grave, and expect the recompense of what you do. Are we ready for that moment, the moment of death? Are we ready to meet Allah Azza wa can, do we feel comfortable if we were to know that the angel of death is coming right now? That we're on good terms with Allah and Sawjah? This is a question that we always need to ask ourselves before it's too late. Kalla lamma yaqudhi ma amara. No, he, mankind, has not yet accomplished what he, Allah, commanded him. Despite all of these favors, despite the fact that we know, and they knew, the Quraysh, that he was the creator, yet they do not fulfill what needs to be fulfilled. They do not accept, and for those who accept, they do not maintain themselves within the limits, within the boundaries of Allah This uh, concludes the second set. See, this surah has four sets of uh, verses, four different scenes. Uh, this concludes the second set uh, of verses with which we will conclude uh, and resume afterwards, inshallah. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illa anta, astaghfiruka atu alaykum.